to this new season of the Big Dress Energy podcast. I am your host, Shaquille forbes Bell. I am a fashion psychologist, author of the best-selling book, Big Dress Energy, founder of the platform fashionispsychology.com, where we have launched our brand new online course, which is an introduction to the whole world of fashion psychology. If you don't know, this podcast is all about fashion psychology. We have experts, we have stylists, we have hairstylists, we have everybody that's invested in the world of aesthetics, talking about their deeper meaning. It's not just how you look, it's about how they make you feel, how they make you interact with others what they say about you and so much more so that's what this is all about and I'm so delighted to start off this season with this amazing guest today we have Jennifer Moholsky Bray she is a fashion stylist an amazing fashion stylist editor and consulting dividing her time between London and New York after graduation Jen moved to New York to pursue fashion styling kicking off her career with a position on the hit fashion forward television show Gossip Girl everybody knows Gossip Girl and Jen is now a freelance fashion stylist with broad exposure including celebrity styling international magazine editorials TV presenting consulting for luxury brands and so much more hi Jennifer how are you today oh thank you so much for having me I've been following you for quite some time as you know I think because I'm like such a cheerleader for you (laughs) no honestly I still Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really appreciate all of your support. I've been seeing it and I just love your work. I'm such a fan. And I think a lot of the things that you create is just so in line with the research and the science that I'm talking about. So I'm grateful to have you on here today. Um, So Jennifer, we always ask this question to all of our guests. So I'll start things off with what does Big Just Energy mean to you? Well, this is such a hard question because I feel like it means so many things. But I hope it's the feeling that my clients have when they walk out the door after we put on like a major look for, you know, a red carpet event. Um, And it's like the feeling for everyday people when you're wearing your favorite outfit Mm -hmm. or, you know, you're wearing your lucky underwear. I think it's the confidence that wearing the right outfit helps you show the world. Yeah, I think confidence is so important. And I think that's my issue when people get dressed in the morning on autopilot. They're just kind of doing it as like, you know, something run of the mill and they don't realize that you can literally shift how you're thinking by deciding on what you're going to wear. And I think that speaks a lot to working on sets with characters, like understanding how you can get into the mindset of someone else and how they act is really a part of like how they're going to dress and how they're presenting themselves into the world. So I think that just segues nicely into your work with Gossip Girl. Like, can you tell us a bit more about that and what it was like and just your overall experience with it? Um, So Gossip Girl was like my second job ever. Um, I was obsessed with the show and I was at Elle magazine at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, I would like always just talk about it because I had read all the books and Uh, And I heard through the grapevine of the fashion industry that they were looking um, to hire a fashion assistant. And so I was like, yes, this is my chance. So I was like, please, please, like, put me forward for an interview or like, give me the email. Um, So my boss at the time emailed them and got me an interview. Mm -hmm. And um, they first brought me on as an intern. And then that segued after, I think, a month into the full-time position as a fashion assistant for the costume department. And it was like such an amazing time in my life because watching, I think they did the first half of the first season or maybe Mm -hmm. it was the whole first season. I did three seasons with them, which is like, you know, I think it was series two, series three and series four. Um, So I knew all the characters so well. um, And I was in charge of like handling all the clothes coming in and coming out, Mm -hmm. um, doing some returns, doing some shopping for the show. They had like a designated shopper, but sometimes the workload would be like too much for her. So She'd like pass it on to like an assistant, which would be me, which is very exciting. Um, And I would set up all the fittings and sometimes I'd be in the room for the fittings, sometimes not, depended on the character really. Uh Um, But it was so, so, so exciting. And I think I learned so much being on that show, like the different types of styling you can do. Because being at Elle, it was just like what was mainstream styling. Um, But then the characters on the show were so, so different. Um, to each other when it came down to like what they wore and like their type, their types of style. Yeah. So um, it was really, really fun. And it was my first time working with men as well. I was used to just doing women's wear. Um, yeah. So it was the whole new world and it was so fun. Um, yeah. Can I look you back at that. Oh, sorry. sorry, what did you say? I said, I really look back on that time fondly. 
Amazing. And can you tell us a bit more about like the actual process of understanding the character and deciding, okay, they would wear that versus no, they, they definitely wouldn't wear that. Like, how does that work? Because I feel like that's psychology. Oh, yeah, it probably is actually. So the different characters all had different mood boards, like hard copy, big mood boards in our costume department. Um, and we'll go into, say, Serena, who was Blake Lively's character. Um, on her mood board, it was a lot of like Kate Moss, Sienna Miller. It was very like boho and like kind of like effortless and chic at the time. So, um, you know, like she didn't, they wanted, we wanted to show that she didn't try very hard, but she just looked effortlessly cool. And whereas Blair, who was um, Leighton Meester's character, it was all very like breakfast at Tiffany's, Audrey Hepburn, and like everything's well thought out and meticulously planned um, and, you know, perfectly fit. Whereas Serena wore a lot of like flowy things and, you know, stuff that didn't need to be like tailored perfectly to fit her body. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love the, the thought that goes into it because I feel like we should do that ourselves every day, like really think yeah. about how, what, what character we want to step into, like what part of ourselves we want to explore. And it must have been so nice, like, seeing your work trickle down into the masses because it was very influential right you could see like yeah. start addressing like like the characters on the show yeah and the difference so I did the Duchess which was like a tv show on Netflix with Catherine mm -hmm. Ryan mm -hmm. and that process we filmed everything and then it took like months um months and months for it to go on air um but with Gossip Girl we filmed it like maybe a month a couple weeks a month in advance and then they'd edit that episode and then it would go out because it wasn't like a box set like we have now where yeah. everything's like on demand. You get like all 10 episodes at once. It was like every week they like we did an episode and then they yeah. edited it and then went to post-production and then it hit the TV. So it was really exciting because it was like it didn't take very long to see your actual work on TV, mm. which is really exciting. It's like one of my favorite things about my job is seeing all the hard work in a tangible form so whether it's on a tv screen or you know a book cover or you know in a magazine you know i just love seeing it in like it's real life form yeah that's so brilliant it just seems like you've had so much experience like you talk about magazines and tv shows and book covers like can you tell us maybe what was the hardest occasion that you've ever had to style for um i think I think maybe on the Netflix, the Duchess show, mm -hmm. because um, there was so much pushback from Netflix because I had never done costume design. I was just yeah. an assistant. So I think Catherine had to really, really fight my corner and was like, she knows what she's doing. Just I don't want anyone else styling me. She has to style me for this to work. So yes. without her, I they wouldn't have used me. And mm -hmm. the best part was the Duchess had such good press because of the, uh, the styling had such good press, I should say, both the Duchess and the styling separately. But I had so many interviews from that. And I think it really showed Netflix like that I could do it. And yeah. like, it was good that they, at the end of the day, put their faith in me to do it because it was such a battle at the beginning. And I had to have like every little thing signed off when it wasn't like normal protocol. Like I had to like have these, old men execs basically sign off these outfits and they're like we don't think she should have a headband I was like no the headbands are what's gonna make like like that's gonna be with her character throughout the entire show yeah. like the headbands are staying I really fought for those and then there was like a huge headband boom I was like fingers crossed headbands are still really big when this show comes out because it had just started going up in like the trends but it was like not a lot of people were wearing them yet yeah. so I was like I'm gonna take a risk and hopefully in nine months time they won't have like totally tanked. Um, so it, it worked out really, really well. But I think yeah. that was hard, like fighting for something I knew how to do. Because yeah. at Gossip Girl, I was, I knew like about continuity, which is like, you know, when a character say, say a character is wearing a pair of jeans and they trip and fall. And now they have like a little like dirt mark on the denim or something, like yeah. making sure that that dirt mark is there for like the following scenes. Because mm -hmm. They film scenes like all out of order, depending yeah. on like cast availability and stuff. So I knew like continuity is like the hardest part of costume oh. and costume design. So I was like, I know about continuity. I know about like 
everything that I think I should know about, um, you know, give me a shot. And so fighting my corner was worth it in that. Um, I'm glad I did. Yeah, it seems like it paid off and it must be hard, yeah, to have someone who you just know doesn't see your vision, especially someone yeah. that's not as ingrained in it as you telling you what to do. So I think everybody's grateful that you stood your ground. Yeah. And oh, you just thank you. Amazing, amazing results. And like we mentioned before, like you have these mood boards for your characters, right? Like you know how they're going to act, like you have it written down. And as much as I think it's great that we should be able to do that and identify the characters, what we want to embrace, I think it's clear that we are different than what we see on the screen right we can be very complex we might act differently in different environments like we're not people that can just act one way every single week and that's why i personally don't believe in having a signature style and i have seen like it, there's been a shift but i feel like stylists back in the day they used to say everything signature style signature style capsule wardrobe like that's what you need to have and I always just felt a bit out of place with that because I felt like my wardrobe never looked like that it just looked very eclectic and I wanted to get your thoughts on that I love this because those are my exact thoughts as well I call myself a style chameleon and I feel like some of the best dressed people I know are style chameleons and it means they can embrace what they want to be that day. So, for example, today I'm wearing like, I mean, a really jazzy like pantsuit. It's super comfy. I can like sit Indian style, which is how I normally sit, like on a seat yeah. and a stretchy waistband. But it looks like super chic. And I'm like, I'll be business but comfy today for my podcast with you. Um, <laughs> and so I think just embracing the person you want to be for that day is so important. So like I will dress depending on you know, what I'm doing that day. I won't have a signature style. Like I won't always dress like boho chic, like I'm going to a festival or mm -hmm. something, you know, like that's, that's great. If some people, I think it's more for people that really struggle to know what to wear. Yeah. And they're like, you know, they're like, I need something easy because getting dressed is stressful. Um, but for people that like to have fun with fashion, I think being a fashion chameleon or style chameleon is so important and so fun. Yeah. Um, I love looking at my wardrobe and seeing like all the different people I could be. <laughs> yeah. And how would you maybe identify the different people in your wardrobe then? Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, I don't have very many serious characters in my wardrobe. Mm -hmm. um, I really tend to wear color a lot mm -hmm. um, because I do think A, I look better in color and B, I just like the feeling and I like the joy that color brings. Yeah. Um, don't get me wrong, I do wear black, but most of my black stuff is like embellished a little bit. <laughs> so I'll have like a little bit of sparkle on it or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think other, the different people in my wardrobe probably like when I go to work, I tend to wear jeans and mm -hmm. something comfier because a lot of the times I'm like on my knees putting a model's shoes on or a yeah. client's shoes on and, um, you know, you can't like bend over and <laughs> have your underwear showing. So like, yeah, I tend to wear jeans or more jumpsuit something practical when I'm going to work yeah and then when I'm going out I tend to wear like it's the sexy version of me maybe with like a mini a mini dress or something a mini skirt or something yeah. um my legs are like one of my favorite parts so I usually have those out instead of my arms or anything yeah um, but yeah I, it's so fun I think fashion is so fun and I do feel like a lot of stylists and a lot of like editors have lost the way and I see so many like grays and tans and blacks and browns and you're like come on where is the fun in fashion yeah. <laughs> no I completely agree and something you just said I want to pick up on about your legs are your favorite part so you showcase that versus your arms and I've been asked a lot recently about like body image and how to dress for your shape and again I look at like old school kind of stylists I used to follow and it was very much like if you're a pear shape wear this and if you're an apple then wear that but I love what you say it's more about what you like show that what you don't like hide that yeah I don't know if that's how you is that how you approach styling as well yeah yeah because for me I wouldn't I, say that I'm like an apple shape which is like where you have like a bigger around like I feel like I'm pretty much 
all the same style. Like I'm no part of me looks like out of proportion. Huh. So I wouldn't really think I would fit into the that category. But I just like my legs more than I like my arms. <laughs> <laughs> my stomach, yeah. I suppose my stomach I'm like less happy with now that I've had kids and stuff huh. than I used to. I'm, I used to maybe pop it out more on occasion, but now I'm like, all right, only a sliver at the top if I'm going to show it. <laughs> but um, yeah. but yeah, I think confidence is key and like. I wear things that I, that make me happy. And I think that is like when I'm shopping, which I don't do very often, to be honest, um, Mm -hmm. I won't buy anything unless I think it brings me joy. I love that. I think that's an approach. If everybody's listening, that's what you need to do. If it doesn't make you feel happy, it doesn't make you feel confident. It doesn't matter if it's trending or, you know, you just really need something for this event. Like you need to check first if it's making you happy and confident. And like you said, we have the power to showcase bits of our bodies that we'd like and make ourselves feel more confident, essentially, because we are giving ourselves power to put our bodies in the best light. And I think that's brilliant. And I'm glad that a stylist is saying that as well. So I think a lot of people think that a stylist will tell you like how you need to show your body, but it depends about how you feel about your body. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, yeah, I think you could be confident wearing anything really, yeah. um, as long as you feel it in yourself. Yes. Also, there's so many good rental platforms now for um, clothes that it's like, there's no need to buy anything that doesn't make you feel like yeah happy and joyful so rent it instead of buying it exactly. is there are there any that you like particularly that you like? I love um my wardrobe and they have uh, like a pop-up in Harrods at the moment which is really good yeah um, but I think we have such a big selection also her is really good h-u-r-r yeah. mm-hmm. um, they have a place in Selfridges I think all these people are like teaming up with different um big department stores which makes it really nice for like the average consumer who wants to yeah. go in and try it on instead of you know, getting it shipped and worrying about like, is it going to fit? Is it not going to fit? Yeah. Oh, um, I think, yeah, I think I'm going to start using her as like, cause I have so many clothes just from like different projects I've done and stuff. So I was like, I should start renting these out. Oh my um, God. I will be the first person to rent out <laughs> stuff. It's just, I'm in talks with one of the companies, but I basically, I don't have the time. I haven't had the time to like send them pictures of everything and then telling them like how much it would have been worth. Like if I would have purchased it, mm-hmm. a lot of times I get things for free or like um, I get given things for work. So um, it's like, Oh, I don't even know. So that takes so much time. I'm like, I have so much stuff though. Yeah. Um, I need to get it out. Um, so- yeah, I'm the same. I have a bag of stuff that I ever want to sell or Kate to the tailors or yeah. Yeah. It's just time. That's just time. Gosh. It is. Yeah. It is. But it is going to be worth it. We should yeah. both get on it. <laughs> yes. Okay. We'll make a promise to ourselves. Yeah. And if you have that bag or there's things in their wardrobe, let's sure yeah. try to, to make a move on that. Um, yeah. It's going to be quite profitable. I think now a lot of people are looking at their purchases, especially their luxury purchases, as like an investment and like a side yeah. Like, yeah, it could be for you, but you could also make a bit of money on there, like get more use out of your clothes. And I think that adds exactly. to their value as well. Exactly. Um, I love it for kids' clothes too. Like, I I've been really into like vintage at the moment. Um, I'm like obsessed with it for getting stuff for my kids. I'm like, oh, Stella McCartney kids for five pounds? Yes, please. <laughs> we are on different vintage. I need to go and look at that as well. Look at Stella McCartney. If, I mean, you don't have kids, do you? So, but well, if- I have my niece and nephew that are eleven and eight, and I'm very yeah. involved in their lives, and they are continuously growing. And it's hard because I try to be more sustainable with them, but it's hard to like try and find things that I think they'll like and that. Yeah. Good. But maybe yeah, it's just about doing a bit more digging on these platforms. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, gotta love a resale. Yeah, <laughs> brilliant. Um, and something that you mentioned earlier was about your love for color. So I shared that. Um, it doesn't look like that now. I've recently gone blonde, as you can see. <laughs> I've been doing it right now, fellow blonde, and I'm finding a bit difficult, like dressing with this new hair color. I don't know, but then I'm looking at people like you, and you're you're embracing. You wear all types of colors, and it looks great. And I think that's something I want to get more comfortable with when I'm changing up my my hairstyle, matching it to my outfits. But I love color. I think color is something that we should all dress a lot more. There are studies that show, particularly in the UK, that you know the majority of us live in neutrals, specifically blacks. And the reason why is because we think it's um, less individual 
individuating. So that means that we um, are happy to kind of blend into the crowd a bit more when we're wearing black, which is interesting because black is associated with like power and prestige and luxury. And people take note of people more in group settings when they're wearing black because they think it's more dominant. But the way people think about it is it's almost like the opposite. Um, and one TikTok that I did recently was about the psychology of pink that did super well. And I used some of your styling work in it and um, talking about Barbie Core, which is brilliant. It was just an explosion of pink. Um, if you haven't seen it, just like, yeah, Google, Google Jennifer. And I think it was, it for Zara? I can't remember the brand that we were for again. Um, Balenciaga. Oh, wait, no, it was Balmain. Balmain. It was for, um, are you talking about my photo shoot? Yes. Yeah, it was um, Balmain and what magazine was that for? Oh my gosh. Is it hungry? It's, bizarre. it's a whole bar month. Oh my god! So yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was it was amazing. Anyway, but I just wanted to know more about like your approach to color, like when you're styling. Ooh, my approach to color when I'm styling. Um, I think color is so important. Um, to, to utilize. So I think in a sea of um, you know, everyone wearing black, like you said. Yeah. I think for clients who are in the public eye, wearing color makes them pop and stand out in a crowd. So I love using color for that reason. And when I dress clients for like TV shows and there's like other people on the show, we try to wear something really bright so that people's eyes are directed towards them, um, on, you know, on the show. So like when you're looking at everyone's wearing like navy or black and they're wearing like hot pink or like bright yellow, uh -huh. It's like, who's going to attract, like, who, yeah, yeah. what color is going to attract the eyes the most? Yes. Um, so that's a big part of how we dress clients, which is great. Um, yeah, and it's fun, too. Yeah. Because you only are looking at black items. It's so boring. It's boring. But what would you say to people, which I've got a lot of comments about that, who they might be scared to wear that color because, yeah, they, it does. It grabs attention, especially things like yellow. Like, it draws attention. It's more memorable. So mm -hmm. how can you get people to be a bit more braver when wearing color? Ooh, go get your color analysis done and see what colors suit your skin tone. Yeah. Um, I have I know a lot of people who do the color analysis for people. Yeah. Um, and it's just amazing like watching the difference of, you know, like when you have a more muted tone versus a jewel tone and how your eyes light up with certain colors. So yeah. I think if you're scared to wear color, go get your color analysis done and you'll be blown away about what color can do to your natural features. Have you had your color analysis done as well? No, because I just love all colors. So like, I think <laughs> I wouldn't really like, I don't know. I'm not afraid to wear color though. I think if I was afraid to wear color, I would have it done, but I don't think it would change how I dress because. No, I think, I like, think yeah, I think yeah. That it's definitely good for people who want to explore more, not sure where, but I'm like, my, my wardrobe's like a, a rainbow. Like there's everything in there. Yeah. Um, so I feel you. And um, on a similar vein, we're talking about different tips for people, the everyday person who, yes, wants to really maybe expand their wings, but they're not sure how. Do you have any style philosophies that you'd like to share that you think people should really listen to? Um, gosh, I just think you should wear what makes you feel the best. And don't worry about the trends. You know, trends come and go. I think buying staples that make you feel your absolute best. I know we kind of touched on this briefly, but I think I'm a huge believer in it. Like I always love a bit of sparkle. So embellished pieces bring me the most joy. So I think when I see items like that, um, and especially like if it's gone on sale, I'm like, yes, that's for me. I'll keep that forever. Um, but yeah, I don't really pay attention to the trends that much. Like obviously here and there, like I'm, I've said goodbye to skinny jeans and hello to the comfier <laughs> of them. <laughs> yeah. um, but, you know, I'm, I'm not that trend obsessed. And I think it's because I'm trying to be more sustainable. I try not to purchase from fast fashion. Um, I did this segment in Chicago where I'm from on like fast fashion and how detrimental it is to the environment okay. and um, how there's this website called Shop Up. I think it's here as well, but it caters to all sizes. So it's like really in the front line of like um, plus size sustainable fashion. Mm -hmm. And because um, I think what I 
find is a lot of my friends who are um, in bigger sizes, they are the ones that are struggling the most to find sustainable options to wear. Mm-hmm. So I think just, you know, making the options that are sustainable um, more known and out there for people, yes. um, I think the better. I think that's a brilliant point and I don't think a lot of people talk about that in the sustainable conversation and I know I've noticed that like I'll go on Depop or eBay sometimes and I just see a lot of size sixes size eights and yeah it's a bit it's a bit difficult to to be sustainable when you don't feel like you can fit in so yeah more platforms making it more available for everybody to be sustainable mm-hmm. I definitely think that's something that needs to be addressed um which is great um yeah. I want to pivot slightly and talk about nostalgia. So I've talked a lot about nostalgia being such a persuasive tool because people always look back at the olden days, even days that they weren't even alive for yet. And they look back on it positively. And I think that's why some of your styling work with Gossip Girl, like you said, the Duchess is still, it still has such a strong hold, especially on this like Gen Z and millennials, because we love looking back at nostalgia. And it's interesting. I think there's a bit of a correlation with, life being a bit stressful and then the power of nostalgia being a bit stronger because people want that escape and then I like thinking about nostalgia and how it influences like vintage clothes and like old clothes that like you might have so I want to talk about like your personal wardrobe like what's the oldest thing that you have in there and how does it make you feel when you wear it and like what's the story behind it um the oldest thing I have um I was given this. Um, I was given this cardigan um, for my birthday when I was, one of the years I was on Gossip Girl, and it was worn by Serena um, on one of the episodes. And I was obsessed with it. And I was like, "Oh, I really want it. Like, I can't afford it um, because obviously all their stuff was so expensive." Um, and they got it for me for my birthday, and I was like so over the moon excited. And I was like, it's, "Like, been worn on the show. Like, how cool!" Yeah. Um, and I still have it and I still wear it like all the time. Um, it's like this gray waffle print um, long line cardigan. Yeah. And it has like little embellishments like all over it, yeah. like different types of embellishments too. Mm-hmm. Um, it's one of my favorite things ever. It's definitely looking more worn now, but it's like I, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with it still. And yeah. it's been, I don't even know how many years, like almost probably 15 years. Wow. I don't know. Maybe, I mean, how old am I? I'm 35. So like, <laughs> I don't know, like 12 years? <laughs> yeah. So good. Well, I thought I was good still having things from eight years ago, but yeah, 12 years. <laughs> amazing. And I think, see, it's possible. People think that, oh, you, you can't have things that's too old or like you have to keep consuming all the time. But if you have something or buy things that you truly love or people yeah. might be that super thoughtful, then they are going to get a lot of rewear and they're going to be meaning, really meaningful. So yeah, I love that story. Where is it from? Um, it's from a brand called Hot Hippie. Oh, cool. Um, I, I don't even know if it's still around anymore, but um, yeah, it, it was like a big popular brand in New York and in the States back at least a decade ago. Oh, vintage. We love a good yeah. Um, So you still have things in your wardrobe that you're wearing now that's from a long time ago but I'd love to know maybe how your style has evolved over the years if it has a lot or if just slightly can you speak to any changes that you've noticed in the way that you dress um I think I haven't really changed my style that much. I mean it's always changing and always evolving yeah. but I've always really been into like sparkle and embellishments yeah. I think I touched on that previously yeah. so I think I still love that sort of thing. I think maybe the only thing that's really changed is like I maybe dress a little bit less sexy than I did when I was like in my 20s. Yeah, no. Um, Yeah. Yeah, I definitely agree that too. In my book, I talk about like getting rid of all of my Poochie Mama like party dresses when I was 18 because I was looking at them and I was like, I don't feel like that anymore but not to say that we can't like we can show yeah. our bodies we can step out but it's just like maybe you feel differently maybe you're just not in that space anymore and yeah, yeah it's important to grow and let your wardrobe grow with you exactly mm-hmm. yeah I used to do bottle service like in my early oh. 20s as well and so my dresses some of those I'm like I don't even think I could fit one leg in let alone my wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> I love that when you look at those tops and you're like who wore that like who yeah. wore that Jennifer like I don't recall that anymore yeah. um, so 
I just love a lot of your work and I'm sure you've inspired a lot of people, but I'd love to know like who's inspired you and your work over the years. I think a lot of the time it's people I've worked for. So um, Eric Damon was the costume designer of Gossip Girl. He really, really inspired me. Um, I just thought he was brilliant. He worked on um, Sex and the City as an assistant before he did Gossip Girl. That makes so so much sense. I wanted to ask that because I feel like there's such a crossover in the way that the styling is on both shows. So, oh my God, so interesting. he, He was so like so huge in my life and in like the inspiration um I worked for Josie who um was the creative director of Elle magazine while I was there um so he did all the cover shoots and stuff and I think I just learned so much from those two men um creatively and like how to organize yourself so that you could have multiple projects going on at once yeah and um yeah be organized for all of them um yeah so I think it was just people that I worked for. I really was really, really lucky that I had good mentors. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so good. And maybe for upcoming stylists, like what advice would you give to them? Cause I know a lot of stylists, they, they follow fashion and psychology and they utilize it in their work. But as someone that's so accomplished and experienced, like what a specific advice could you give? In my best advice would probably be to, just keep at it and give it your all and don't be afraid to ask for experience. Mm -hmm. So, and email and email again, because a lot of times I get emails from people and they'll be like, they'll be like, do you have any shoots coming up? I can assist on for work experience. And I'll look at it. I'm like, I need to remember that. And then it's lost in the season. (laughs) So it's like, just follow up. Like, and don't feel like you're annoying these people because Mm -hmm. it's just, we're really busy. Mm -hmm. And so you know, things get lost in, but it's not that we don't want to help you because we want to help as many people as we can. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I'm not the only one that feels that way. So I would be happy to have as many people like email me that want to learn the ins and outs. And I try to take on as many people as I can um, and give people experience because just takes one photo shoot for like, you know, a stylist to go on. Um, see the ins and outs and then you'll build up your book to assist other people yeah. um, so I think yeah just persistence and you know getting yourself out there go to the events go and just do test shoots as well mm-hmm. test shoots are so important email photographers who are looking to do work and unfortunately it's free because you're building your book but you know the, the photographer is not getting paid the models aren't getting paid like it's everyone's doing it for free and it's just to build your portfolio so you could showcase what you have to offer yeah I think that's brilliant and yes work hard reach out but if you are established as well like like Jennifer is doing like pass the torch you know like help people out like and I think that's what I'm always preaching about like trying to to help others because you know there's there's room for everybody and I love that and I think everybody listen to Jennifer and follow her lead because I I don't actually feel like there's many well maybe there are but I think there's this idea right now because we're becoming so individualistic as a society that we kind of need to go it alone um but like you said like you have to collaborate you have to reach out and work with other people network across as well don't just network up um in order to make it and I think you're a great example of that so I love that um and one of my final questions is so what are you excited about in the future we've talked a lot about the past we reflected but let's talk about what's going ahead like what are you working on now um I'm actually writing a book um Yay! I know I'm so excited. Um <laughs> it is to help stylists, um upcoming stylists. Um basically I have a styling course um yeah. on styledbyjmb.com. Um and I'm basically making that into a book. So the publishers had reached out to me ages ago, I think maybe a year ago. Um and yeah, we've been like talking about it back and forth and finally like um, I just started writing it this year and it's my first draft is due in December yeah. um, of 2023. So it'll be out in January, 2025. Yeah. Um, it's going to be heavy on images, but also like, I hope it's like the Bible for people who are trying to get into styling yeah. and I cover like costume design, um, editorial styling, huh. um, celebrity styling, all sorts of styling. So yeah, I'm really excited. Cause like, as, as a stylist, like, sorry, one second. <laughs> Nori, one of my dogs. 
That's why. <laughs> One second. Yeah. Um, sorry about this. Okay. Um, so I'm the front door. Um, yeah. So but yeah, as a stylist, like in the industry, uh-huh. um, when I was first trying to figure out, like, how do I even break into this world? Because my family didn't have connections uh-huh. um, and I didn't know anybody. So I was like, I need, this is what I want to do. I need to make this work for me. Right. Um, and I'm going to do everything I can to do it. So basically I was like, what, as a, you know, as an aspiring stylist back in the day, yeah. this is the book that I wish was written, you know, for people like me back then. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so, really- so I'm really excited to help people, I hope. And then it, it, it'll be appealing to like normal people as well. Cause I talk about how they can, you know, be a style chameleon or find their personal style. Yeah. Oh, I'm excited that. about that. Do we have a With title that. yet for it? Is it? Um, it's called Styled, like style and then E-D, like, yeah. like style ed. That's cool. Oh, I love that. And tell me about the writing process. I love speaking to writers about Yeah. Because my um, writing journey nearly, like, finished me. I, towards the end, I was looking a mess, Jennifer. I was, like, just, like a mess, just, like, not sleeping, less into the book so much. It was. It can be really hard. It's so hard. Oh. Um. My husband's like, it's just everything you know. Just write it down. I was like, I've never <laughs> written a book because if you haven't written a book, I don't want to hear any of this. Exactly. Um, yeah, it's it's really daunting because I have basically because I did the course, yeah. and so I had everything written down for the course. Um, and like chatting with, like chatting face to face with the camera, mm-hmm. I knew I knew everything I wanted to say, but it's so different writing it. And the publishers and I decided that we were going to make it appeal to the masses as well as people who wanted to get into fashion. Uh So I think for me that just like threw everything because my styling course was all about like aspiring stylists. So this was like putting the twist that any everyday person can read it and Uh gain a lot from it as well. So I think that aspect of it has made it really tricky, but so far I'm pretty close to finishing it and I'm really proud of the work that I've done it's just finding the imagery that like suits what I'm saying too is like so hard yeah and I didn't realize like all the legal things that go into it as well with Mm -hmm. images and stuff so uh, it's a big learning process that's for sure Um, but it's been hard and I hope I hope it's worth I hope it's worth it in the end I'm sure it'll help people and I'm that's the whole game plan I mean you must you were you're so successful do you have any tips for me oh my gosh no I think everything you're saying is spot on like I made sure that I wasn't writing the book just for me and just for like a self-fulfilling practice and I always had the end person in mind and I think that's exactly what you're doing like I'm trying to make sure that I'm helping and I'm giving those practical tips and I'm giving insights and I'm being very vulnerable and I think one thing I learned like between my many drafts was to put more of myself into the book and I wondered if you're doing that as well like I have some like tidbits about my life and it just I think it allowed people to relate a bit more to the the hardcore like research and science I was putting into it which was hard for me because you have to be very vulnerable in order to do that and very transparent like talking about like your journey and personal things I don't know if that's something you're considering in in your in your process as well yeah um yeah so I yeah it's just like so hard to like find a balance but yeah so I'm I'm talking about a lot of personal things as well in my journey like in every aspect of the book which yeah. is exciting it's just so yeah it's stressful because you just don't know what people are gonna think once it hits exactly. um stands you're like oh, please give me five stars <laughs> <laughs> no honestly it's very nerve-wracking but once you get those like first couple of people reading it like I always recommend as well get your family members to read it they will be super brutal they're not like your friends like they will be like that's trash or that's great and, <laughs> very honest. and they'll help you edit um and I'm so excited for you. I can't wait to get that. Like, please let us all know when it's going to be on pre-order. Yeah. I'm sure if you follow Jennifer, you'll be able to see it. Um, yeah. But before I let you go, I do want you to promote your course a bit more. I think that's amazing. Oh, yeah. Tell us a bit more about it, what people can expect. Yeah, so basically the course, I, I loved doing the course. So um, it's all recorded um, now. I did have like it, like the first initial time I did it, it was like, I had um, meetings with all of my students and stuff and I still will do that for people that purchase the course, but it's not in like real time from the course. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's all recorded. It's 
um, on styledbyjmb.com. Mm -hmm. And I think the course is basically the book um, for yeah. people that want to be aspiring stylist. I give loads of information away, yeah. um, email formats and to how to contact people. And like, yeah. basically, I think it's just a really, really cool thing for people who are aspiring stylists because it, yeah, it, I think it's relatively affordable. And, um, you know, I think the information that I give, one of the girls who was my videographer, she was like, she was like, I did a four year fashion degree and I learned more filming this course than I did in the fashion degree. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, thank you so much. <laughs> that is what you want. That's the yeah. fact that you want to give people like, like giving them what they need, but in a condensed way and that allows them to make better use of their time and in a way that's affordable and accessible. That is definitely, you, I couldn't get a better, um, hear a better compliment than that. You must be so happy. Yeah. I know. I was so happy. I was like, yes. Um, Cause that's what I wanted. And then, of course, after the book, um, deal came along I was like oh perfect because I do want it to be like super accessible but yeah the course does give away a lot and like I show examples of stuff and it's fun because I think that like it's more visual obviously because it's videos yeah. um and I give like pdfs of like um of like templates and stuff for people to use um in real life yeah um yeah, so I think it's it's exciting. Um, yeah, I love the course. So check it out if you want to become a fashion stylist. Yeah. Um, it's it's great. Um, oh, I highly recommend it. Yeah. It's yeah, it's good. <laughs> yes, make sure you check out Jennifer's course and Jennifer. Tell everybody where they can find more about you, where they're gonna hear your book announcement, where they can follow your work. Um, follow me on Instagram. Um, that's where I'm most prominent, I think. Um, I need to start using TikTok. You're really good at TikTok. I need to take notes from you. I don't know. I was good at TikTok. And then I've been posting recently and it's not been good. I think with TikTok, you have to stay on there or else they'll kind of push you down. But you are brilliant on Instagram as well. It's, it's just about transferring things over. But yeah, what's your Instagram handle as well? If everyone wants to follow it it is a doozy. So probably check the writing underneath this podcast, yes. but for this YouTube video, yes. it is jennifer.maholsky.bray.style. Um, so it is a tricky one. Just check the writing. We'll have it the yeah. <laughs> um, thank you so much for having me. And I love following your journey. You are so amazing and brilliant at everything you do. And I love seeing all your TV segments too. It makes me so happy. Oh, thank you so much, Jennifer. Honestly, I have been just so inspired by people like you and like all of the work that you're showcasing. And I just love that I'm able to, like you reference some of your work with some of the research that I'm talking about. I just think it's just a perfect marriage of both worlds. Um, so thank you so much for coming on. And thank you everybody for listening to this um, new episode of the Big Just Energy podcast. You can find out more on Instagram, following us at Fashion is Psychology. We also have an online course that you can check out, fashionispsychology.com. If you are an aspiring stylist, you've already done Jennifer's amazing course. You want to add that layer of scientific um, knowledge to it and psychology to it if you are someone that's just coming out of university and you want to learn more about psychology if you want to learn more about how all of this research and ideas can be utilized in a business sense for consumer insights for research purposes in fashion brands definitely check it out on fashionispsychology.com forward slash courses i'm shakayla forbes bell your favorite fashion psychologist follow me on instagram at shakayla elise and on tiktok and yes yeah, stay tuned for next week's episode thank you so much Thanks, Jennifer.